Enjoy this message courtesy of Overcomers Assembly Studio. In life, you've got to make a choice, right or wrong. We pray that you are blessed as you make the right choices in life. When we meet, I will say yes. That was a day that it brought us together like this. And that we can read the sense of what he did in our life. That we're able to make it to the end. May the good Lord guide us in the remaining journey of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Without taking much of our time any longer, let me with all humility in my heart bring up the one that God has prepared for this unique message which is bigger than any one of us. The message that is coming from an awesome God that you and I will be happy that we did not miss out in the impartation that God is going to give unto us today. Join me in welcoming Dr. Olushoga Depoji to bring us the word of life. Greetings to everybody on the platform and happy Sunday. Holy Spirit, moving now, moving now, make our lives holy again, holy again, Spirit, over all. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, moving now, moving now, may our lives holy again, holy again, Spirit, more over all. All over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, like the prophet said it will be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. Like the world that covers the sea. Mm. Hallelujah. All over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, like the prophet said it will be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation. Of the glory of the Lord, like the waters covers the sea. Amen. Amen. Our Father, our Lord, our God, we yield our totality unto your hand. We invite you, Lord, to visit each and every one of us. Our faces are different, so also is our needs. But Father, by your grace and mercy and compassion, meet each and every one of us at our point of needs. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We say thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. The topic is deliverance. The days of miracles are not over. Deliverance. The mm -hmm. days of miracles are not over. Let's quickly open our Bibles to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 verses 1 to 10. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 10. It reads, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. 
and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sunscreen upon you, and you will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sun spray and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four wings, O breath, and breathe upon this slain that they may live. So I prophesy as I was commanded, as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, and exceedingly great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of you. Ordinary event or development that is inexplicable by natural or scientific laws and is attributed to divine agency. Miracles defy natural and scientific laws because such laws are in suspension or overridden supernaturally for a miracle to take place. Every one of us, we pray we want miracles, but no one wants challenges. For miracle to take place, there must be a challenge. For miracle to take place, something strange must have happened. If it is sickness, it must have deferred medical science for God to intervene. When all hopes are lost, that's when God steps in. May God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, may he step into our situations in the mighty name of Jesus. The one who is, who was, and who is to come. May he take absolute dominion over our totality and glorify his name over every burden of life that has stood as a challenge against each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He says, these days, we hear the term miracle freely used for virtually every little thing like winning a football match. We say a miracle has happened. The biblical use of miracle is an action of God that produces a part from the natural means, an action that pointed to God as its cause. For example, crossing the Red Sea on dry land. It has never happened that a sea will part and people will walk on dry land. Healing the sick, casting out evil spirits, feeding a multitude with five small loaves of bread and a couple of fish, or walking on water are just a few examples of biblical miracles. These are clearly God caused, not just something that was unusual. You find out that this God that we serve will intervene when all hopes are lost. When we all say, well, there is no hope, there is nothing, the person will come back to life. The miraculous will supersede whatever challenges, whatever reports anybody has written. May the Lord God Almighty show forth himself as the mighty one in our lives and in our hopes in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's look at types of miracles. Miracles similar to what was recorded in the Bible, just like our Bible reading of Ezekiel 37, 1 to 10, 
these are unseen or not as obvious. For example, God's intervene to prevent an accident. A miracle because it is something that God did, did, but we likely have no idea that it's even occurred. I remember the case of my late mother at a place called Gagi in Ibadan. A trailer, the tire of a trailer rolled out of the trailer. And, you know, the poor woman with her uh, wears on her head. The tire was coming directly behind her. The son, the last child of hers, saw the tire. He did not know what to do. But just at the point of reaching her, the tire coughed out and went somewhere else. If that tire has struck that woman, no matter what anybody said, that would have been an end. She never saw it. What diverted that tire? The hands of God. May that hands of God touch each and every one of us today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I strongly believe that when God answers prayer, a miracle has occurred. Whether that is healing, protection from harm, or equip us to service in his kingdom, all these are miracles. They are God's intervention in the normal working of the natural world. And these miracles are happening in the world today. Reasons for miracle. Why do we have miracles? The Bible offered many reasons why God would go the extra mile to perform miracles. One, God performs miracles so that people may believe in him. Let's be honest. You see somebody, a family, a friend of mine in Australia, I saw the posting, they are posting on the Facebook. They said, this guy has been in coma for 11 days. And the doctors have invited the family that they should just come and pay their last, last respect before he goes. The oxygen mask in him was pulled out. As the mask was pulled out, the next thing they noticed was he shook his leg, his legs. And he opened his eyes. Meanwhile, the doctor said, if he survived it, he would be a vegetable. And the first thing the guy did, he saw his children, he called their names. What is happening? Why are you here? And they said, well, he has been in coma for about 11 days. He said, no, I just had a brief sleep. The only person that can restore that life is God Almighty. You find out that the God we serve is a God of restoration. No matter the challenges, no matter how bad the situation is, the moment he steps in, a change comes in. Miracles are still happening in our time. This is something that the miracle I've just mentioned now happened this year. I spoke with the guy. He said, sure, God just celebrate with me that God has given me a second chance to live. It can only be God. May the Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, touch each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, God perform miracles so that people may believe in him. Exodus 4, 1 to 9. Miraculous signs from Pharaoh. He performed miracles out of love and compassion for human sufferings, just as recorded in Luke 7, 11 to 15. Jesus raised the son of the widow of Nain, the only child. As a widow, it means she has lost her husband. They said the only son passed on. And at the gate of the city, Jesus Christ met with this widow. He had compassion on them and raised the child back to life. Anything that is dead in us, anything in us that the enemy has destroyed, Today, the Lord God Almighty will have mercy and compassion on us and restore us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes it is the authentication of a prophet as a true servant of God 
Acts 2.22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also know. I think as a young boy, the first time I witnessed a miracle was in a city called Joss in Nigeria. We went for a service. This boy was lame. And they put him in the middle of the church. Everybody was there. You know, young children we are curious. And I was looking, what is going to happen? What are they doing? They started praying for this boy. And the next thing, something that looks like a lizard, crawled out of his body. And the boy stood up. Everybody was amazed. And they started shouting. They said they should not allow that thing that looks like a lizard go away. It was killed. But now the boy stood up. And like any curious person, people, people who knew the boy started saying, ah, ah, is it not so-so person? Is it not so-so person that he, he was born that way? It means this same God is the God of yesterday, today and forever. What he has done yesterday, he will replicate again in our time. I was in a camp meeting in Nigeria. This was a situation that happened in the camp in Nigeria. This young boy, they prayed for all the children and unfortunately the boy could not stand. They said the nickname of the boy is Aaron, meaning elephant. And it happens that they said the boy came from my town. So after the meeting, I called people that lives around the area and they confirmed it that the nickname of the boy is Aaron, meaning elephant. Mm -hmm. All the other children received their healing, but unfortunately, the boy could not stand. So the, mo the mother picked up the boy and walked to her seat. By the time they got to their seats, something happened. People started shouting and people were wondering what was happening. The boy stood up and started walking. It can only be God. May that same God that restored that boy, may he restore us in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know the challenge any one of us are passing through at this time. But if God can bring that boy only back into life, it will bring us back into life in the mighty name of Jesus. He says some other reasons for miracles common to most of the records of the miraculous in the Bible includes strong faith in God, hopelessness, helplessness, and desperation. If you are desperate for a miracle because your case is hopelessly helpless, the almighty God will rise on your behalf and give you a mighty miracle today in the name of Jesus. Miracles are real and genuine miracles are found in the Bible. As a matter of fact, so many human conditions are beyond natural and scientific solutions. These are distinct situations for divine intervention. When our case become hopelessly useless, that's when God intervened. My late mother, I remembered when I came back from Australia, they said my late mom had cancer of the backbone. And the next thing I said was, well, let's try and organize and take her to UK for chemo. We were working on that and uh, she said she would go to the camp. She went to the camp. Nobody laid hand on her. Nobody prayed with her. Nobody said anything with her. Like any other person in the camp, she was there worshiping her God. And she said, after the meeting that the breeze blew on her. And we said, yes, breeze was blowing on everybody. What's, what's strange about that? By the time she went back to her doctor, they found out that the cancer has disappeared. They could not even find the point again where Paul was coming out from. That is a miracle from God Almighty. No other person will have done it. 
but God. May each and every one of us witness miracles in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In John eleven forty, Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto, unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. May we see the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is confronting each and every one of us, may the Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, the one who created the heavens and the earth, step into it and turn our challenges into testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Philippians 3.10 says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto death. In Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Just like Paul, every one of us needs to continue in our task for more of him if we want God to always move in our lives and situation. There are few things we can do. Genesis 18, 1 to 5, I will not read that, but Abraham had a divine visitation. Some strangers came close to his tent, but they did not seek to go inside, even though they were on an assignment to bless and transform his life forever. Thank God, Abraham was sensitive enough to realize to realize he must do something in order to get something. Abraham showed good hospitality to his visitors. At the end of the day, the miracle, the blessings meant for Abraham did not elude him. May our blessings and miracle never elude us in the mighty name of Jesus. Power in the spoken word. There is power in the spoken word of God, and this power produces unspeakable wonders. In fact, the entire universe was formed by the spoken word of God, 2 Peter 3.5. In 2 Chronicles 20.20, 20, it says, believe in the Lord, your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. And in Psalm 1, 07 verse 20 it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction in Matthew 8 8 he says then the centurion answered and said Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed may the spoken word of God bear fruits in our lives and in our home. May the Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, the one who created us, manifest that great glory of us, of his, in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. The resurrection power of God in Christ Jesus, may it manifest in every areas of our lives in the powerful name of Jesus. It says, without controversy, there is power in the word of God as spoken by the genuine ministers of God. Because these days, there are genuine and there are fake prophets of God. But may we have an encounter with the genuine prophets of God. Because lots of people have turned the ministry of Jesus Christ into a money-making venture. And as such, lot of people have been discouraged about what goes on in the church. But may we be encouraged. May we hold on fast unto him so that the glory of God in Christ Jesus will manifest in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It says, we must therefore comfort ourselves with wisdom so that the spoken word does not affect us negatively. The spoken word of God, which came to the widow of Sarafat through Elijah in 1 Kings 17 14 is a case in point. It says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meat, meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fill, until the day that the Lord sent it to rain upon the earth. 
in First Kings 17:16, and the battle of meat, meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fill, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. I remembered a case. And um, this man of God said by so so date, he gave the date that a miracle will happen. And we were, I was getting close to the date, nothing happened. And I was wondering what sort of false hope has this man given me? The very last day, I received a phone call. I wouldn't want to mention the name of the person, a medical doctor, unknown to me. And he said, he got my number from someone. And uh, he will want me to do some couple of jobs for him. That was when I got this water drilling rig. He was asking where I was staying. He came to my house and he loaded money in Ghana must go. It was during an Easter period. And I told him, sorry, I cannot take this money from you. Why? He came with someone. There is no way I, can, I cannot transfer the money to the bank that uh, period. So I said, if he's interested, after Easter Monday, bring the money. And he came. It can only be God. This same God is still in the process of glorifying his name. May his name be glorified in our lives. May his name be glorified in every situation we find ourselves because he's the almighty. In first, in divine touch, in Matthew 9, 21, he says, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Are we making any move to touch his garment? Are we convinced that by reading his words, by assimilating his word, by meditating upon his word, we can touch him? And that that challenge we have will vanish by us just making an attempt to touch him. That's the case of the woman with the issue of blood. In 1 Kings 17, 17 to 24, when the son of the widow of Sarah had died, and Elijah was informed, he prayed, paced up and down, threw himself on the child about three times, and the child came back to life. Something struck me now. I have a relation. I wouldn't mention her name. They said she couldn't conceive. The father took her to UK, and in UK they said she had no womb. Oh, the father said, you see, the British uh, medical services are kicked. Let me take her to US. She took the daughter to US. They confirmed the same thing. And this girl, out of frustration, told the parents, please don't do anything again. Just leave me. If I'm going to die barren, let me remain barren. But she made a decision. The decision was, I'm going to hold unto God. And that year, miraculously, she became pregnant. And the question is, where did she carry the pregnancy? Today, to the glory of God, she has a son. That can only be God. That same God is alive. That same God is with us. These are situations that we know, not something I read or not something somebody came on the altar and started saying, these are things I've witnessed with my eyes. And it can only be God. May that same God minister unto us and touch each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. In 2 Kings 13, 20 to 21, then Elisha died and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. 
And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. He still creates. The God we serve still creates. In 2 Kings 5.14, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Case of Naaman, healed of leprosy. If we need a lot of classical examples, we have them in the Bible. But let's look at examples of our time. I know of somebody, the, the, this person is a friend to my younger brother. And the mother was told that she had, the mother of this guy had cancer. And they told the woman to go and prepare her home that she has less than, I think, three months to live. And like any other person, she got to the son. The son said, what can I do to mommy? Let me take her to the camp. Mm -hmm. They drove to the camp on visitation. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody spoke to her. As they stepped into the camp, they said there was a word of prophecy. You, that woman, you've been told to tidy up your house. But God says, I've healed you. The woman is alive. It can only be God. May that same God, through his spoken word, manifest in the life of each and every one of us. We've seen people who are barren and have been made fruitful. We've seen people whose name has been changed by prophetic utterances. Name it, whatever it is, God is always there. Provided we have the faith. Provided we trust and obey him. Provided we hold on, on to him. Provided we are willing to touch the hem of his garment. This God never fails. Is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. May we buy our heads. Let's start talking to God Almighty, the King of glory. I don't know what your challenges are. I don't know what you are trusting God for. But one thing I do know is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he has done it yesterday, he can replicate it again today. Talk to God Almighty to intervene over whatever challenges you are going through. Talk to the Almighty God. Tell him you surrender your totality unto him, that he should come into your life. Take the rightful position of, over your life, that by his mercies and compassion, just like he had mercy and compassion over the widow of Nain, that he will have mercy and compassion over you and your household, so that whatever these challenges are, he will uplift them off your shoulder. Talk to the almighty God, this same God, that somebody that has been written off, dead, that the person is alive. That same person in our generation, that same person has witnessed the marriage of our own children. It can only be God. Talk to the almighty God, the king of glory, the same God, that could, a plane could crash. Lots of people died in the plane and this person survived it. How? It can only be God. Talk to the almighty God, this God of science, wonders, mighty miracles and testimonies that this same God will touch you, that this same God will manifest his glory upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Amen. Lord God Almighty, I thank you because you are the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, there is no impossibility with you. With thee, you said everything is possible unto him that, that believeth. Father, even in our unbelief, Lord, help us. Have mercy and compassion upon us. Touch us and let the glory and the beauty of God, let it manifest in every areas of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever we've sinned against heaven and earth, Lord, we ask for mercy. That through your mercy, you will have compassion upon us. That through your mercy, every evil in our lives, Lord, will be taken off. That we will arise and shine. And that the glory of God in Christ Jesus will be seen upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We say thank you, Daddy, in Jesus' 
mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. People of God, we'll still continue the prayer, especially for those of us who are gathered together here today. I want you to put your right hand on your head. I want us to join our faith together, trusting this God more than ever before, you know, in this outreach. I want us to believe that God has spoken to us as Presley. And that's whatever desire we have, that God will help our faith, deepen our faith such that we will be able to cooperate with him to do this miracle today. That God, what has not made my life to be beautiful enough, what has not made me to be proud of what my existence is in, on this earth, what has not made my production to be able to, you know, for, for me to, to, to be accomplished in the things I do? What has not made me, you know, to be able to do what others will see that, yes, you are my God? What has limited me in one way or the other? What has not made my joy to be full? Lord, by reason of today's prayer, I ask that miraculously you visit me, miraculously you turn around those things and make me to move into a, a better level, a different level. You make me to be able to stand and walk. You make me to be able to comprehend well. You make me to be able to use my hand to, you know, to, to, to bring food on my table. You make me to be able to, you know, to, be, to become a family person again. You make me to be able to move around and do that that I love to do. Father, visit us at our different areas of need today. Let us be seen as your children that are different. Let us be seen as people who carry signs and wonders all around. Lord. This we are asking, not because we want to show off, but because we want to be your glory. Yeah. We want to be seen as your glory. We want to be seen as your peace to. We want to be seen, Lord, as the one that you want to use to show people that you are still doing miracles, even at this dispensation of our time. Father, Lord, we thank you. We cover ourselves with the precious blood of Jesus. And we say that the, your, your son that you have used today, let him, let, let, let him continue to manifest that strong glory of yours. Let, him, let anything that he says today not work against him, even in the remaining journey of his life. And let himself and the entire family experience more of your glory in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we know that the greatest of the greatest miracle is for you to set us free from utter darkness and to bring us to your immaculate light. We pray today that any area of darkness around us be clean and cleared forever, that we will not experience such again in this remaining journey of our lives in Jesus' mighty name, that everywhere around us we show of your light and of your beauty in all areas of our life in Jesus' mighty name. I will say you would deliver those of us that are still languishing in darkness by reason of the devil keeping us. We ask that we be released completely from the antics and from the shackles of the devil in Jesus' mighty name, that we will become free and free indeed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Thank you, the ancient of this. Thank you, the I am that I am. Blessed be your name, Lord, for indeed we have become new in your presence in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our videos and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.